Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Monster Prom. I'm the Outback Al. I'm Hot for Justice. And I'm Chiba New. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna finish up this this round. I'm hopefully gonna get a secret ending. Some other people are probably gonna get some stuff. We've been seeing some things we haven't seen before, which is nice because usually we end up seeing a lot of stuff that's pretty normal for us. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I don't know what my stats are right now. I feel like I need fun, but how badly do you need fun, Gav? Um, I need fun. <laughs> you need fun. I need fun. You need I have... fun. I have four. You have fun. very little fun. How's I think my boldness is probably my lowest stat, isn't it? Yes, yeah. it's a three. Chibi, do you need boldness? I don't know that I need any particular well, okay, stat, so but currently, I think I need more money. Okay. Because oh, I'm oh. Apparently on a Vera route. Um, <laughs> yeah. The cats out and the outdoors. Ooh. Oh, that sucks. Then I yeah, guess you know, you could it. buy a fun thing with money. That's true. Yeah. So you could get that either way. Um, but yeah, if Chibi, you don't need any boldness, I'm just going to go up my lowest stat. That's fine. Because I don't know that I'm going to need boldness since I'm on a secret route or a special route. But mm -hmm. still, it doesn't hurt because it's poly. Right. Okay. So... Bathroom. Yo. Yep. All right. I'm gonna sew my thing to my arm again. <laughs> Should really go hang out with Vicky and figure out how that's done. Uh, <laughs> skipping class. Special term. Bathroom. But let's just let's just blow through this. Uh, Hyenas. Yeah, we remember that. They're the security team. <laughs> Monster Scouts. Your bathrooms. Boldness. So much boldness. Uh, later you see Polly floating around, her ghostly glow less ghastly than usual. Oh, hey, Al. I'm just hovering a little low today. Oh, dear. Everyone seems so hyped about love, and I love being hyped, but I'm not really sure how this love thing works, you know? Oh, no. I thought I was love once. I met a beautiful girl at a party and felt this strange magic. Okay. My temperature rose. I felt even floatier than usual. Everything was so bright and beautiful. I was ecstatic. Okay. But then I remembered that I had taken literal ecstasy, so it was probably just that. I see. Classic mistake, am I right? Possibly. I've, I've had some pretty good highs, but they just say being in love is the greatest high of all. The next time I'm on a date with someone, what can I do to fall in love? Or float in love, since gravity doesn't actually affect me. Oh, you don't want Polly to float in love with another person, but you like Polly just too much to not help her, despite the consequences. I don't think this has any- do you think this has to do with my round? Um, I don't know. Let's, let's see what, 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 what's gonna happen, um, because I think I can through this. All right. Scientifically speaking, people who fall people fall in love faster when afraid. Do something fun with them, like getting stabbed. Stare deeply into their eyes for 14 hours. Okay, what are my stats? I think my smart is pretty high. So Your the scientific. Is a okay, I think the if we're talking science. I think I'm gonna go with that one, the top one. Okay. Okay. Hope that okay. Does, I think that's right. Okay. Yep. Woo. OMG, great point. I love science. We established it last time I saw her. I mean, I don't, but I love it when it gets me drugs or gets me laid. Loved, not laid, loved in love. Haha. <laughs> that Polly disappears, literally, to begin her quest for the terror that is love. She catches up to you a few days later. Hey, so I went on a Tinder date the other night with this super cute humanoid. And I took him to a getting stabbed party, just like you suggested. And it was awesome. He was so terrified. It was like each time a knife entered him, he got more scared. Oh, oh man. And more in love with me. I don't the think that's but then the date continued because he bled out and died and became a ghost, so we had even more in common. Like, I'm over it now, obviously, but I'm pretty sure I was in love for like 15 whole minutes. Next time, I'm gonna try and work my way up to 25. Okay. 
Polly in love for 25 minutes, but maybe the next time it'll be with you. Maybe you'll even make it to the 50 minutes for it or eternity. Either way, you've opened up Polly's heart, <laughs> metaphorically, to love, and gained two charm and one smarts in the process. Man, that's fucked up. <laughs> yeah, it's a little fucked up. It's, it's Polly, though. What were you expecting? Oh, uh, okay, so... Money! Also charm! Okay, your charm is lower, but money, I think, is a more important thing, because money. you might be able to buy something. I don't know. Money! I've never successfully gotten Vera ever, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, that day you spent time in Star Kicker. Lots of people send up. Blah, 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 blah. This group project is worth at least 30.06% of our grade, so I want to focus. Calculester, are you good at math? Friend Vera, I am a supercomputer. I am made of math. Great. So no shenanigans, you guys. I mean it. Nothing crazy can happen in this library for the next 30 mi- Who shows up? <laughs> we are here to save the day. We are oh, meeting God. everyone today. <laughs> <laughs> like the Slayer, uh, Dimitri, these guys. It's like everyone's showing up. Yeah. It's like they knew this it. was the end of Halloween season. Everyone yeah. except for Miranda. And we're all okay with this. Yeah, we're fine. Even <laughs> Leonard showed up. Like every yeah. side character. I know it is very rare to see students at Spooky High studying Friend Joy, Friend Hope, and Friend Faith, but I assure you that the world is in no danger and this is a very normal activity at many other schools. Fair <laughs> ladies of magic, you, uh, you may have beaten me to the library, but you shall not beat me to their souls. I feel like there's a whole other thing going on that we're just dropped into. Going on. Come, fearsome <laughs> snake lady and middle monster, come join me in the dark side. Will that help me pla pass this class? Because my interests right now are limited solely to doing that. Crime bosses respect you less if they think you're stupid. Yes, joining the dark side will definitely help you pass this class. Don't listen to him. Those lips speak nothing but lies and give nothing but kisses of betrayal. <laughs> oh, they they boned. Yeah. They, they boned. And it's also an incredibly fiscally responsible decision. Fiscally responsible, eh? Tell me more. Yes, please tell us more. From context, I'm assuming that this dark side refers to the evil nature of your plans rather than color, but moral ambiguity often confuses me. No need to be confused. Joining the dark side is the right thing. Oh, I always do my best to do the right thing. Oh, no. No! Don't! And I'm a pretty big fan of doing the things that... Oh, that's opposite of the thing the Coven is trying to get me to do, so I'm almost tempted myself. But if they go to the dark side, how will they go to prom to, to your side? Time to sway them. Dimitri's not telling you the dark side's darkest secret. Terrible Wi-Fi. No way, everybody's going to the dark side these days. It's totally touristy and played out. The hot destination this year is Malaysia. Um... What? <laughs> oh no. Um... Okay. <laughs> Wi-Fi sounds like a smart thing. Yeah, that's true. And the other one seems like a persuasion thing, which your charm is bad. Mm. Or it could be creativity, but either way, your smarts are your highest stat, and if that's smarts, I think that's the way to go. Which one? Are you gonna pick? Hello. Can you hear us? E. So, what do you think? Did you say the last one was? Probably. I, I think the second one's either like charm or creativity. But here's the thing. If the first one smarts, doesn't matter what the second one is. That's true. So go with the first one. Crossing everything. It's Wi-Fi. No, bad Wi-Fi is bad for Calculester. He's not going to go for that. Nope. Okay. It's the first one? Yeah. All right. Yeah. 
Indeed, our Wi-Fi, like everything else on the dark side, is the most terrible Wi-Fi imaginable. Our evil, sentient, wireless internet crashes at only the most inopportune moments. During the climax of your favorite show, when you're downloading a JPEG of a boob, when you're sitting on the toilet staring at your phone to avoid considering your own emotional issues. Hmm. Yeah, that does sound terrible. It is! It's the worst! <laughs> no, I mean like that sounds really actually bad and unpleasant. Uh, oh, well, uh, that's the point? Why would the denizens of the dark side intentionally subject themselves to poor Wi-Fi? This seems irrational. Wait, is the dark side just a shitty apartment with low-tier Comcast internet? It yep. is, isn't it? Yep, I feel that. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, I mean, uh... How many bedrooms does the dark side have, Dimitri? How many? A three! Three bedrooms! But only one bathroom! <laughs> I feel like I'm turning into the Count from Sesame Street. <laughs> one bedroom! Two bedrooms! Three uh, bedrooms! Uh, uh, ah, uh. Ah, ah. Get out of here, you disreputable real estate agent. Get! <laughs> Scat! Get you gone! Various snakes lash out at Dimitri and he vanishes in fright, leaving behind the stack of apartment applications he was going to try and get them to sign. Oh, oh so the dark side's just an apartment complex. <laughs> yep. Good job rescuing your friends from a predatory landlord tenant relationship. You gain two smarts and one charm. Ooh, Got some charm for you. Hey, Gav, you're up. You can. Uh, again, I think buying a. a, a fun item could could do you good yeah i'm gonna do it do it do it hey last night i read this article on how money causes pocket cancer in the long run you don't want to get pocket cancer Quick, give me that dangerous money you have in your still well healthy pockets Oof. so what's fun is it the shades what's the no, hype station it's cocaine is fun and I don't have enough money for it. What's the hype stage? Um, I High thought the glasses fun. were fun as well. Oh. That might be. Yeah, because I know yeah. we've bought them before and they've had fun with them. Or, another option. No, no, don't go with the present. You can see what happens with no. the present. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Fun. Uh, yeah. Special funny sunglasses, cool. and you got yourself a good amount of fun out of that. Yep. Let's trade play this. Uh, video game. Sly Cooper. Um. Kingdom Hearts. Hmm. Uh, Danganronpa. Okay. Okay. Players decided how much time you could remain alive, provided you all were transported <laughs> into the game's universe. Uh, uh, I'm just so gonna... dog and Rafa may die. <laughs> Most people die in that. Uh, yeah. I'm not super familiar with Kingdom Hearts. How much do people tend to live in those situations? Uh, I mean, a lot of the characters are still alive. There's I mean, a... granted, Organization 13 pretty much all died, but they came back to life. So... Okay, um, not many people die in Sly Cooper. I'm just gonna throw that out there. It's mostly okay. about stealing things as opposed to killing Ew. people. And even the people you beat up and defeat in the end, they don't die. They just go to jail. So, I'm gonna go with, uh, I, I kind of think my choice is probably the safest option. You're gonna go to jail, but you're, you're not gonna die. Yeah. I can see that. Gab, I, Gab, I think you just picked bad this time around. Yeah. Alright, week two, noon. Let's do this. Alright, who am I gonna go see? I think I'm gonna go see Polly. Or do I wanna go hang out with the wolf pack? I don't technically need hearts, do I? Mmm. 
page. Someone please go to the wolf pack, because I do want to see what they're up to. I mean, I feel like we've seen all of their stuff. Well, you never... They want to add in new stuff. That's Maybe. true. Maybe. Oh, yeah. I'll go hang out with Polly today. Okay. Okay. Polly? Yep. Polly. 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 You approach Scott and Polly's table to find them crouched behind a pile of jelly desserts. Plotting. We got a prank master's moment? Ooh. Thank Bruce if you're here, bro. Come on, join our huddle. Maybe you're curious about our huge pile of jelly jam gelatinous dessert cups? Well, wonder no more. We're going for the jelly prize. Yeah, we have not seen yeah. this. We're gonna win. If we collect the foil covers of 100 jelly desserts, we will be the lucky winners of... And he's One free spirit. jelly dessert. Ah! ah. But right now we're stuck. We've only got 99. That means we need... We need... One more, Scott. We need one more. I need that. We need one more! <laughs> you give them your jelly dessert, but you already threw it at a bird person you hate. Guess you've got to make a choice. Steal the final jelly dessert from the jelly dessert factory. Make like a puppy dog and beg. All things are sweeter when achieved through pity. I think um. the second one is a Scott thing, so the first one's definitely a Polly. Mm -hmm. um, I need me some Polly today. Alright. That isn't stealing wrong. No, Scott. That's a myth. Like hangovers in the afterlife. But um. if the afterlife isn't real, why are you a ghost? There's no time for metaphysics, Scott. We've got a heist to plan. I like heists. No! Coach said stealing is wrong, unless you're stealing a ball, or a base, or a victory from the jaws of defeat. Actually, it seems like sports is mostly about stealing. Well, that settles it. Time for stealing. I just brought up Sly Cooper and now we're off on a heist. <laughs> <laughs> one fake bus, one really woolly mammoth, and a, brutally, <laughs> and a brutal running gun battle later, you finally secure one illicit jelly cup. Which you turn in, along with your 99 other jelly cups, for one free jelly cup. Jelly cup. Scott is too upset by all of the violence, so you split your free jelly cup with Polly. Worth it. Okay, my turn. Um. Mm. You could buy something if you wanted. Yeah, I could. But, but no, you probably I mean, want hearts, I, you know. I know, I need my money. That's true. Um. Yeah, what do you want to do? Um, here's, I was gonna go talk to Zoe. Here's but... the kicker. They're both at the same table that you need to go to. That's, that, that's why I was asking. Yeah. I mean, unless one of you wants to go hang out with the wolf pack. Mm, I'll go hang out with the wolf pack, I guess. You're too nice sometimes, you know that? <laughs> Don't push it. Hey, it's something, you know. Alright. You barely sat down when the whole wolf pack comes running over, clearly panicking. Okay, I think this is new. Doc, you gotta help us. We're suffocating. It's like we're not getting enough air. We can hardly talk. But you're talking uh, right now? You see the problem. You remind them that in addition to breathing out, they need to also breathe in. Inhale. Exhale. Oh, well, that works way better. I have no idea how we forgot about that. Uh. Yeah, you don't know either. Thanks for saving our lives, dog. We owe you one, and we'll pay you back. Right now. What do you want? We'll do literally anything. Ooh. Teach me calculus. Give me an extra make extreme makeover. Um. um I would not want to learn calculus from them. <laughs> I'll throw this out there. Uh, the makeover could give you a lot more charm. Which, you need that money for Vera, right? Charm. So, extreme makeover? We have not seen these, a couple of these. Extreme makeover? Like an extreme makeover? Are you sure? Oh, this um, might be bold. Uh, yeah. You not know, because apparently this is what you want from a pack of idiot dogmen. <laughs> Alright, uh. boys, you know what that means. Time for one of our patented extreme spa treatments. Uh oh. Suddenly, you're surrounded by wolves covering your face with their wide, moist tongues. <laughs> oh, no. Yep, this is someone's fetish. Ew. 
He can feel your pores really opening up beneath the relentless torrent of dog saliva and unconditional love. Yeah, uh, thank you? You're basically being, like, you know, you're, you're under a swarm of puppies being licked. I Aww. mean... But they're no, grown no, men. Dogs have a tendency to lick into my nostrils. So. Yeah, that happens. That's where all the good stuff is. When the wolf pack oh. finally gets bored of licking you, you're positively glowing. You gain four, plus four charm. You're glowing because all the light's reflecting off the spit. <laughs> you gain charm. Yeah, you're there pretty you charming now. Awesome. For some reason. Great. Fantastic. I need Wonderful. More money. Glorious. Okay. Could always go for the president and get infinite money. You approach Vera, who is conspicuously cutting up an enormous stack of credit cards and feeding the pieces to her snakes. Zoe is sitting across the table, staring intently at Vera and frantically scribbling it into a notebook. Oh, this ought to be good. A little privacy, please? This is obviously a business luncheon, which means that it's a write-off. Zoe's longest purple tentacle creeps an inch closer to Vera, then Zoe scoots her whole chair a little closer. Back up. I bite. Mmm, interesting. Are you even listening to me? This is a life or death situation for you, dork. Not what I would have expected. Damn it, Zoe! Besides my obvious beauty, entrancing charm, and tremendous wealth, what are you looking at? Oh, it's not obvious? Zoe flips over her notebook to reveal a massive chart of Vera's snakes and all of the different shapes between them. There are so many ships. arrows and symbols. All the... Oh, all the ships. Okay. There are so many arrows and symbols and snakes that you're worried she might actually be summoning some kind of fanfic demon. At first, I was really into, into my main ship, a front left snake with back center snake. They just have a really natural pairing, you know? But then I started thinking about the rivalry between all three front snakes, and how it could be this kind of triangle rivalry hate sex kind of thing. Um, Zoe? And honestly, that just really got me into the questions about the rules of the snake first. Like, can they get married? Can they move positions on the head? Do they have tails that are inside your head? And, and... Zoe! Vera, you just had to tell me, how do the snakes poop? I have to know. That is enough! You are hereby banished from this table. Go ship my snakes from a safe distance before I get a restraining order, you little purple disaster. You decide to intervene because one, you care about your friends, two, you don't want to see them kill each other, and three, you've been wondering about the whole snake poop thing yourself. <laughs> this is actually a very good question. Vera, maybe knowing the allegiances, preferences, and sentiments of your snakes could be the ultimate trick for the silkiest, most dangerous hair ever. Zoe, I think I've stumbled on the ultimate Vera shipping chart. Look, Vera's hair and Vera, X being left alone. First one. Yeah. Exactly. For example, I can tell you, I can tell you that the snake on your forehead is insecure about its girth and length, and that makes it its poison less deadly and its relationships less healthy. For maybe the first time ever, you've made a good point. I milk my snakes and sell their poison, so it'd be great to know which one is the most potent and virial. Virile. Virile. Words. Pronunciation. Is it working? Yeah. Do you see it? I can see it. Does Chibi see it? No. I just got back. <laughs> also, ah. I've always wanted to wear a hat, but my snakes won't sit still, and the hat will fall off my head, and that's obviously unacceptable. Zoe gives Vera the full rundown of Serpent Synergy. With a little coaching from Zoe, back center snake works out its insecurity issues with the front left snake, and Vera's hair has never looked more emotionally immature. Hmm. Let's trade playthroughs! Okay. Alright, everybody choose something cool, say your choice out loud to the rest of the players before clicking. Ice! Um... 
the bottom Some. of the lake. Cool or coal? I don't know. Cool. We're just going with something. I'm gonna say some sick shades. You got some sick shades. Okay. All right. There is a sign on how important it would be to bring the selected thing to our first Mars colony. Start debating now. Um, okay. I don't know if you could bring the bottom of a lake to Mars. But a lake would be ideal. They already have ice on Mars, I think, so... Yeah. Why would we need that? I mean, it's still need to melt it, though. I think the bottom of the lake is more of a location as opposed to an item, though. Because when you take the bottom of the lake out of the lake, it's just some water. Okay. Then, but what about some thick shades? You know, the sun is pretty... It's not much of an atmosphere. You're probably going to need some shades. Probably. <laughs> I think Gap won this one. Okay. Yeah. So who's All coming right. in second? Well, they already have ice on Mars. I guess water would work then. All right. All right let's do this. It's the evening, week two. Here we go. It's our last chance to impress people. Darn it. <laughs> I have nines in both the things I need. Uh, we'll pick one to get higher. Yeah, but I'm not going to get Zoe if I don't have both of them. Do they need to be equal? No. They don't need to be equal. They just need to be above 10. Oh. Well, you know, there's a possibility that, that the answer you give might get you above a 10 on something. Maybe. Hopefully. Hmm. What do you need right now? I need creativity and fun. I think the creativity is the easiest thing to get, and I think if you go with creativity, you might be able to find a fun answer along with, with where you're at. I mean, or, or vice versa. It's possible to go either way, but... I still need money, so stay away from the library. I don't know that I need anything, so I'm, I'm just going to pick up whatever scraps are left. I'll go to the auditorium. That day, while I was rehearsing and lighting inspiration and the ultimate nickname, uh, is to call yourself as one of the seven most douchebag, blah, blah, blah. Awesome nickname. Yibbity doo. Creativity. Uh, come up with a nickname and get the other players to call you that for the rest of the game. Later, you hear some discordant chants, so you got to see what's happening. Oh, oh. Zagord, everyone is here! Realm. It's time to bring despair and doom upon this dimension. Yay! <coughs> I'm back! <laughs> Jeez, stop it for the last time. I'm Zoe now. Can't you respect that? Is this a test? Our unholy awfulness? Are you testing our faith by forcing us to use false names? No. Shush. Our faith is strong, almighty Zagord. We will pass the test. Zagord is almighty. For it reigns in the dark realm and it will bring the void into this puny reality. Ugh. Hey, what's happening here? Stop it. Bad cultists. Leave Zoe alone. Yay! Vera smacks the cultists with a rolled up newspaper until they leave. Thanks, V. They're the worst, always calling me that name, Zgord, and referring to me as It. Sure, no prob. Hey, broskies. We heard that those cult bros were saying, is it true that you used to be that Zgord, bro? I guess so, in a way. But bro, the cult bros told us everything about you. They said, we're good cult material. Something about how being pack-minded is a good start. <laughs> but, but, why would you go from being a giant monster to a little girl? That's so weak. Oh, hush. Ugh, because I didn't feel like myself. It wasn't who I truly was. Hmm, that sounds complicated. Don't let, oh my god! Why are it's you like, back? <laughs> it's like every person, like, is there anyone we haven't seen yet today? We haven't seen the the mushroom. Ah, I guess that's true. Yeti thing. 
Yeah, we might see them by the end. Don't listen to her, she's lying. She obviously did that shit for attention. I can't believe we have to see this guy twice in one <sighs> thing. God. Why are you here, Lenny? Now everyone cho changes their pronouns and identities like they're just hats. Yes. I'll punch him. Nah, just flip him upside down, that should do it. You know what? <laughs> I identify as an attack helicopter. <laughs> You've seen what I did. Yeah. A clever and original joke to prove I think something that's important to you is stupid to me. You can't handle my nuanced humor. Oh, hush. That's like a yeah, decade-old joke. Yeah. Vera says nothing. She just stabs. Le okay. Good for you. Can we see why Vera's the best? <laughs> Vera's always been best girl. <gasps> oh, that was sweet. Thanks again. Sure. You know, we're sisters, not sisters. Haha, <laughs> see what you did there. Puns. I don't know that, that works in, like, verbal context, but written, that works. No, but I mean, really. I've seen you post about it before. Yeah, but that's a written thing. Like, if you were just saying that out loud, I don't know that people could have made that distinction. Maybe. No, but really. Why would you change all that? Like, you also changed your name, even your pronouns. Ugh. <sighs> I, are, I really want you to understand, guys, but explaining all the time is starting to feel like a chore, so anyone else? Don't look at me. My thing is stabbing. So, it's your turn. You sometimes aren't born in a way you truly feel like yourself, like you were born as individual werewolves, I guess, before becoming a wolf pack. Produce a dumb action blockbuster full of explosions that unexpectedly serves as a metaphor of the nuances of identity and transition. What are your stats? Um, smarts 9, boldness 6, creativity 11, charm 9, fun 9, money 2. I feel that the second one is a creativity thing. Yeah. I, I thought the second was boldness. But you're creating something. You're producing a dumb action movie. Uh, I guess, yeah. I'm trying to think of what the first one might be. It could be smarts. It honestly does sound like smarts to me. But is creativity the second. Your highest? Yeah. I, I'm also going to throw that out there. If it is creativity, you might get fun out of it. Or boldness. Well, we'll just choose the second one. I'm, I'm really hoping this is right. Okay. Yes! You go into full producer mode because time in this world doesn't seem to follow logical rules. Soon you have a first version of the movie for all of you to watch. It's called Fast and Furious and Sensible Consent... Con conscious... Con of the nuances of, on gender, identity, and transition. That's a, that's a mouthful. We might want to uh, condense that a little bit. You go all together into a projection room alongside some of the investors who have given you millions of dollars to produce this movie. Unaware, it was all just to convey the message to the wolf pack. Wow, Gav. I'd have never imagined a movie with the Fast and Furious franchise could be so thoughtful and invite us to look beyond the traditional binary spectrum of gender. Yeah, broski. So many rat explosions. They were so sick that they made us understand how all this identity stuff is relevant to Zoe. And what about the fight scene at the docks? Absolutely. It was so violent and suspenseful. It's like it's like the whole scene beat the comprehension and acceptance right into us. Great work, Gav. An insightful movie that caters to a big audience? Admirable. Let me show you my appreciation by giving you free services as your lawyer for all the contract stuff for the movie. For free? Thanks a lot, really. It's very thoughtful that, you, that you're trying to spread a message of acceptance and understanding through the vastly well-known language of Fast and Furious movies. It's about family. Oh, <laughs> all of you are super happy. Later, you realize Vera has signed all papers in such a way that she's now the owner of the movie. She makes millions and gives you just three dollars. Okay, now you got some money. Hey, you got your creativity up. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Plus, it's a good message for everyone. But hey, you've done a good deed and helped many people like Zoe to be more understood and accepted. Oh, Chibi! Library! Go to the library. Yeah. 
time in the library just with Bitcoin and just the things of things will solve the algorithms with the cryptocurrencies and the fucking ideas. Two coins, two money. <sighs> as you survey the libraries, you notice Vera, whose snakes are hissing and spitting as she glares at her computer monitor. This shit is getting so, so, so old. Every time I go on the, a dark arts forum, I have to deal with sexist trolls. Trying to call me out and prove that I'm a fake dark arts girl. Oh yeah, you like Lich King so much, name three of their earliest curses. You probably just take pictures of yourself with cursed artifacts to get attention. As if I can't want to murder people in obscure occult ways just because I'm female. Please. I'm so sick of dealing with this sexist bullshit when all I want to do is use magic to make people suffer. I don't even know what to do. You should write a heated essay de decrying sexism, an essay so heated it melts the eyeballs of anyone who reads it. You don't need to prove your love of the dark arts, just go out and enjoy them. Also, I should totally come with you. Mm. Uh... I don't know. Okay, I think the first one is creativity. Okay. Yeah, that's true. The okay. second one... Here's the thing, if the sec I don't think the second one is fun, so literally whatever is going with the second one is probably the better option. Yeah, let's try that. Even if it is fun, I mean, it's just gonna tie anyway. Yeah, that's true. So, which one? Second one. Mm. A date? With you, Chibi? Oh, ho, ho, someone's going mm. out with Vera, and it's not me, and I'm gonna try to get over that. <laughs> hmm. Well, if it's between that or trying to prove these trolls that I do, in fact, understand how to make black obsidian death powder, I guess you're on. Hell yeah! Time to take Vera on the scariest, darkest artist date you can dream of. You spend all your class time thinking of a perfect dark arts day. Because, duh, why would you be paying attention in school? <clears throat> By the time you pick Vera up, you have that shit on lock. A skull containing the tears of my enemies and a bouquet of poisonous plants that can be used in mind control poisons? Potions? Ellipses. Nice. You take Vera for a romantic picnic in a graveyard, but it's actually an evil picnic because um uh, the picnic blanket is black. Yeah, maybe you didn't think that one that one through, but not all of them can be winners. So I brought enough ingredients to summon the long dead spirit of Agent Warlocks, or to create a mist that drives people crazy. What do you think? You get another choice here. You ultimately side on both and spend a lovely evening terrorizing innocent people. Look at those losers. I mean, this is a bit on them too, right? They must have done something wrong to make the warlocks that angry. Oh, look at that one crying for his life. Cute. You guess the mist that drives people crazy might have something to do with the warlocks' wrath, but who are you to say? Hey, I... I actually had a really nice time tonight, Chibi. You made me remember, it isn't for the trolls on the internet to decide what I am or am not. As long as I'm a practitioner of the dark arts, then I'm a dark arts girl, and no loser on the internet can tell me otherwise. Good for you, Vera. Aw, what a sweet moment for the two of you. Who knew bonding over magical torture could be so romantic? Yeah. Gain two fun and one creativity. Bikini! 
Okay, I guess it's my turn to, to see if I don't fuck up this last part. Do-do. Uh -huh. My stats aren't too bad. Um... I think I want to want some fun. Okay. Yeah, a bit of fun. Probably couldn't hurt. At the angry recess, you start a half-hour rave that goes full crazy. Everything is fine until once. My last little look at us. What about the dim? You didn't remember. You suck at dancing. Apparently, it was a groovy musakad. God, this one's a long one. <sighs> okay. Too fun. But none of that matters. You're late to meet Polly for more party experiments. All right, our research is progressing well so far, but we've got a very limited sample size. I need to know that we can make any party the best, not just some parties. So tomorrow morning, we're gonna crash a funeral. If we can make that fun, we can make anything fun. Oh god. So brainstorm time, how can we put the fun back in funeral? Uh... Possess the body of the deceased, bringing him back for one last party, or bouncy castle. I think I think the first one sounds for fun for Polly, so I think that that'd be a good option to go with. I mean, the second one I believe, and I've actually seen this one before. I believe the second one is fun. I think the first one, forget what that one is. I think the first one's fun. Okay. I'm gonna go with that. Okay. All right. Da. -ha! Later that night. That was awesome! I was totally inside that dude. Good for you! And then when they were like, does anyone else want to say a few words? I was all like, ooh, ooh, me! They totally freaked out. That would be funny. And then I was like, let's turn this funeral into a wedding! And I got married to like 11 people. Wow. Who are all widows now because I left that dude in a heap on the dance floor. But whatever, weddings roll. Hey, Al, you know what? I think we're getting really close to the true formula for a rad party. You're the best science partner I've ever had. Damn right. I guess she hasn't had a lot of science partners. You doubt she even knows the real definition of science, but she's just too happy for you to correct her now. Go us. Come on, the night's still young. Let's go turn an all-night laundromat into an epic rave. Okay. Those washing machines don't know what hit them. You gain two creativity and one fun. Ooh. My boldness is low, but I don't know that I'll need it. All right, Monster Prom draws near. Gav, who you taking? I'm taking Zoe. <laughs> Miranda didn't even get a line. The bitch. Nope. Yeah. Chibi, who you taking? Vera. Ow, who am I taking? I'm taking Polly. Yes. Yeah, let's see what happens. Come on, fingers crossed. You finally pluck up your courage and ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Yay! OMG, prom Ooh. together? Count me in, baby. We're going to have the wildest prom together. It'll be even wilder than the prom Naruto and Garfield go to together on my fanfic, Naruto and Garfield's very, very wild prom night, in which Naruto finally got some of Garfield's lasagna. Oh, I just remembered, when you're doing group play sections, like, the points don't have to be quite as high as, like, single player sessions. Oh, that's helpful. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, look at her dress. Achievement. So cute. Holly Amorous. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Prom night was, uh, was wild. I don't think I've ever seen Paul, or, um... Zoe in the regular prom dress. Neither have I. It was wild. You spent all night discussing about Yu-Gi-Oh! And, uh, and how you strongly believe it is a prequel of Jurassic Park. What? <laughs> no, you know what? I can kind of see this. Um, Think about it. Explain. It starts with holograms, but eventually Kaiba decides, you know what? I'll create real dragons because he's so obsessed with them. And he's like, well, I need a good starting point. Giant lizards is a good starting point, so we'll start with genetically recreating T Rexes. You see where I'm going with this? And this eventually leads to him getting a blue eyed white dragon, but he gets eaten but before the end. Okay. It's the so next he... logical step. 
So he basically created InGen? Yes, he created InGen. He, ah. he's, let, let me let me tell you this right now. He's not John Hammond. He's, yep. uh, what's his face? From Jurassic World, the silent partner dude. The rich uh. old white dude from Jurassic World. Uh, Jurassic World 2. Who cloned his daughter? Spoiler. Who gives a shit about spoilers? The movie was not great. Um, but yeah. Okay. Maybe Moving Mokuba on. was John Hammond. Hmm. He got British. Anyway. <laughs> Weird theories aside. Moving on. Zoe was skeptical at first, but she surely, but she surely got aroused by the intensity of your arguments. One theory led to another, and eventually led to sweet intercourse. Because, you know, sex al sex always finds a way. Especially when you believe in the heart of the cards. <laughs> wow, okay. Yep. Put a lot of those things together. You finally pick up your courage to ask your beloved to go to the monster prom with you. Prom together? I mean, I don't want nonsense to interfere with my skyrocketing career. Uh-oh. But what success oh. if you can't enjoy yourself from time to time, right? Good for you. <laughs> and you're not that bad, I must admit. Good for you. Okay, it's settled. You will help me enjoy myself. Don't read too much into that. We can discuss the details later. See you there. Uh, at one point, Prom was raided by the police. They were looking for Vera, probably on account of one of her many crimes against humanity. But you were two steps ahead. By that time, you were flying to Madagascar, sharing a glass of wine. You might now be her partner in crime, but you also turned Prom Night into a trip together, so it was worth it. Alright, my turn. What? Prom? Of course, prom night will be another perfect opportunity to conduct our experiments in party science. Sweet. So, so clever of you, that's why you're the best science partner. That's not what you meant, but sure, why not? Sooner than expected, prom night is here, and the two of you are finally ready to crack the ultimate party formula. You free some wild animals, you do lots of ecstasy, you awaken the dead, you even do the dance of joy. Let me commence the dance of joy! Everything is perfect. You feel floaty and feel and full of energy. You see beautiful, shining lights, and you feel connected to everyone. Obviously, most of that, that is thanks to the ecstasy, but still. You feel like you've conquered the night and put a flag with your names on the peak of life itself. Then, dawn comes. But now, you're on a hill by the sea, watching the sun slowly coming up. You no idea how you got there, but who cares? Are we in Madagascar, too? Maybe? You're at peace watching the gentle tide of the morning when you realize Polly has her hand over yours. She looks at you. You know what, Al? This might be the Molly talking, but I think I finally got it. All these parties have been wildly different, yet all of them have been the very best. I put a lot of thought into it, and I can only think of one thing they have in common. Yes? I think the perfect formula to a perfect party must be sharing it with the right people. Oh, that's nice. You don't answer. You just hold her hand as you spend the morning watching the sun slowly come up over the sea together. Oh, that was actually really sweet. <laughs> we got a new secret ending, and a bunch Yay. of new events and new outcomes, so I think we're, we're filling shit up. So that's mm -hmm. good. Most likely to become president of party. And you're being paid with this quote. This is outrageous. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right, let's see if we get a thingy at the end. Um, I hope so. Yeah. Uh, two weeks of epic and kept living lives to the, the you know the wonderful due to the obscene amount of fan art features though it is Jim Zave's Garfield is a protege Garfield states Monday's lasagna is a lot of weird stuff uh, viewer kept being fierce and stern as uh, hater said life was going to be and best and she made life her bitch poly drug cooking skill proved useful and she became a chemist for the pharmaceutical industry but in her free time she still cooks the real shit her greatest intentions so far are watermelon-flavored ecstasy and a thing called LS Dope. Okay. Okay. Nice. I'm trying to think. Um, who... The only people we didn't see were Dahlia and the Mushroom. Yeah. That is kind of an accomplishment. I think this one went pretty well. Everyone got a thingy. Yeah. We got a lot of different events we've never seen. This was nice. 
You did a good job here today. Achievement. Yeah. Slender man. We did that the other day. Ah, so many things. We still haven't met the um, swamp creature or the death knight thing yet. But, you know, that's not so bad. Maybe we can find them at some point before Monster Camp shows up. Good on your chibi. Trust me, I got all the add-ons. Well, the game add-ons. Did add you get a body pillow? No, I bought the game add-ons. Okay. No physical add-ons, just game add-ons, because... Where am I gonna put them? <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of sad I didn't get to do the Dahlia voice today. There's like the one that I didn't get to. I didn't get to use the Dahlia voice. No. You didn't get to do the, the mushroom. Or Starfire. Yeah, but we don't care about her. Nope. I mean, I like Starfire. I don't like Miranda. No. I'm actually kind of sad that I gave her that voice. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh! All right, cool. Maybe next time we'll we'll do that next time we play. Bye bye, Hell everybody. Yeah. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, and feel free to check out some of our other gaming videos, our weekly podcast, Anime Yay or Nay, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time!